Welcome to the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke, a show about ancient coins from the viewpoint of a seasoned professional with nearly 30 years experience. Here's Aaron Burke and Mike Nottleman on the Ancient Coin Podcast. And the sound of whatever that is means it's time for what episode is this? 40... 44. 44 of the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. And I'm Mike Nottleman. So I'm Aaron Burke. There you go. Um, on tonight's show, we are going to talk a little bit about, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about auctions. We are going to uh, do an educational segment, as always. Uh, instead of the Pearl of Wisdom tonight, we have a contest for you. So stay tuned for that. But uh, I think that's pretty much our plan. So, Aaron, let's get into it. What uh, what was it that got your eye this week? And I have one more other correction. I just noticed, you know, at the beginning of the intro, maybe I should change this at some point because it says with with nearly 30 years of experience, and I'm actually at 32 now. But the show is almost, is two years old. So... <laughs> There you go. So it should be over thirty years experience. It's over thirty years, but you well, know, it's about whatever. time for a new for a new uh, open anyway. Intro, yeah, yeah. maybe, 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 maybe we 50. can maybe we can do with a uh, with a uh, with like a um, I don't know South American or Russian accent or something. I don't know. Hello. <laughs> um, I was informed today that this show is is definitely not for kids. Um. I wouldn't ever say definitely not, but just I, the educational section. Yeah, the educational section of this one is definitely not for kids. So that warning to you, and uh, so with that, we exactly, yeah, we exactly, and and honestly, we tr we do try to keep it clean. But yeah. on on YouTube, um, the only way you can have comments show up, or that any of you guys can make comments, is if we make it uh, uh, not for children as a setting. Yeah. Um, if you make it as a setting for kids, then you're not allowed to leave comments. And I did that for the first couple, the very first couple shows and people were freaking out. Cause they're like, I can't comment. I can't comment. So we rectified that. Yes. So any, anyway, that doesn't mean you have to be blue. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but if I swear or whatever, well, which we I mean, have occasionally, have, we have on occasion. <laughs> on occasion, you know, it's, it's been more real life than, than anything else. That's just kind of the way it Oh, well, we're just two guys sitting at home BSing about coins. Right. You know, oh, I, I mean, it. you know, so, I mean, when I'm in my family room, that's just what happens sometimes, you know, <laughs> You're not kidding me. so, <laughs> so, uh, auction season is upon us spring 2024 and the premier auction house in the entire world has its auction coming up and it is numismatica ours classica May 7th through the ninth so it's going to be three days of auctions hold on a second technical problem here give me a second oh. Oh, i just you know it's like i don't understand why it doesn't always just come up there we go fixed all right Sorry. no Back worries no worries so um <clears throat> so anyway nac fantastic coins as always they only have two um auctions uh, per year, spring and fall. And so this is the spring one. So, um, I get in the, most of their coins are fantastic. And a lot of their coins are, uh, what most of us could never afford. And so we are going to grab your, uh, this is Aaron Burke giving you your, um, your museum pass. And we are going to go in and we are going to view some museum quality coins. So some stuff Once, that most of us could never afford. But we're going to look at it because it's fun. Oh, yeah. So, this, is, this is the best. And I and I actually think, you know, we all learn as a community when we look at fantastic coins. And so whether you go to, you know, you whether you buy coins out of a out of a pick bowl or you're going to a museum to look at the finest pieces in existence, we're learning all the way across the board, no matter what it is. So and that's the beauty of things. So the first coin that I thought was really fantastic lot 494 minute, this I is I the, this the wrong way so yeah here we go okay Sorry. so 494 this is a fantastic fantastic claudius denarius um probably you know it, it, and in fact when you're collect, collecting the 12 caesars 
I think Claudius, besides Caligula, Claudius is one of the harder ones to get and very hard to get in high quality. So this is really like a stunner. Um, and you can I tell. I actually by the, read the legends on this. Yeah, it's it's like this is a home run out of the park type of coin. Remember when I talked about sculpture? Look at these coins. This looks like a Roman sculpture. Yeah. This this looks like it's it's a work of art. It isn't a coin. It transcends. It's it's so incredible. And so and on the reverse, you have uh, you have um, you have uh, Claudia. Um, I think it's uh, or uh, Consentia, who yeah. is the virtue of courage, and so I, I guess the idea is because Claudius, um, you know, was able to get through both Tiberius and Caligula's reigns, that somehow that was uh to courage in itself, um, ultimately. So, but uh, you know, it's just really wonderful coin and uh it has great surfaces uh it's you know this is one of the finest i've seen so really fantastic uh the next coin i wanted to show is lot 1134 coins of the zodiac so this, on the reverse here you have the zodiac the 12 zodiacs there and most of the time uh there are uh a few emperors and empresses who have done Zodiac reverses. Mostly what you'll find is Antonius Pius on coins of Roman Egypt. Uh, that's the most common. Um, they typically bring quite a bit of money. This is a unique one uh, by Julia Mamea, so, who's the mother of Severus Alexander. Um, and so, uh, you know, and, and this is the other thing that's wonderful about the provincial coinage is that you get all these unique coins from all these Greek cities. This one was out of uh, the um, in Bithynia, which is uh, out of the Black Sea uh, region. And so um, it's just, uh, you know, just a stunner. And, you know, another thing too, guys, you know, go through the NAC lots. I know a lot of you guys can't afford this stuff, but read about them, read about the pedigrees or the, you know, the histories that they have that, they have a note almost on every single coin, generally speaking. Um, and you can really learn a lot about the history, about the meanings of these things. Um, and, you know, the Zodiac probably in the situation had to do with astrology. And so they were studying the stars. And so that's pretty common. Um, this is also an RPC um, just online. So RPC is the, it's Roman provincial coinage. This is the book we use to reference these things, all these coins. Okay. Now and so- I, I have a question. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but it's like, I think I might be learning something here. The fact that this is provincial coinage is why the legends are in Greek. Correct. Wow. I am catching on. Holy crap. You are. You are. So that's how you know between imperial and provincial. Is okay. Imperial is in Latin and provincial is in Greek. Greek. Okay. Yep. That's exactly right. Point for Mike. So, so what's what's cool? So RPC has a whole series of books, but our, they also have an online portal as well. And so this, so they could continue the cataloging of unknown or rare coins in the provincial stratosphere. And so here, this one's showing up online because it's a unique coin and needed to be part of the RPC family. So now I think it's interesting that that the you know the Chinese zodiac is also twelve. Uh, just like the uh, what I would consider our traditional zodiac, and this one is the the one that we like read in the papers is Cancer, Sagittarius, Gemini, all that stuff. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and you know, I mean, hey, star constellations don't change no matter where you are on the planet. So on some level, so and these are all based on star constellations on some level. Cool. So, uh, if we go to the next coin. Wow. Uh, 1064, one of the most fantastic sesterces of Hadrian you'll probably ever see. There was, um, so one of the, the very first Roman coin ever to sell for a million dollars was a sesterces of Hadrian. Um, and so, uh, um, and this coin is almost on that level of quality. It's just, and, and grandeur. Um, and so here you have on the reverse, if you look in the exergial under the exergial line on the reverse, the exergial line is actually the line that they're standing on. They call that the exergial line. 
because so the under X the X is underneath it. Right. And so, and you can see that it has the name of it's Britain. Uh, so this is when Hadrian went, I believe for the second time to Britain to see uh, to the troops who were fighting there in Britain at the time. And so, uh, and so literally history in your hands here showing Hadrian, uh, giving, um, you know, uh, uh, and raising hands to the soldiers uh, at the time in uh, between 130 and 133 AD. So, and for sure, one of the finest, it says one of the finest specimens known, tr truly has a pedigree all the way back to 1906. I was uh, going to say, I don't know how much better you can get than this because the the detail is all there. <clears throat> it's crisp. It's, right. you know, this right. is not a coin that took a lot of work to restore. Mm -hmm. This is yep. one from the middle of the clod, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's it's just it's a work of art. Yeah. So I mean, that's just all a I detail can say. In, in Hadrian on the reverse. Mm -hmm. You know, his mm -hmm. his pants, his his knickers, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, I mean you see his knees, you see the muscles in his calves, you know, I mean just right. all that stuff is there and it's just well, he's probably wearing greaves. Greaves were actually the armor that went from the knee down to the ankle. Okay. They called the they called those greaves. Okay. So, um, and they were typically made out of bronze, and that was to protect your the lower leg. Well, yeah, because you know swords so, and stuff. Right. Exactly. Um, if we go to the next slide, got to bring up the eye bar. This coin. So number twenty three thirteen. Uh, when I thought there would be a finer known eyed Mar out there, I didn't know this one would ever come up. Um, it has a pedigree back to 1922. This is by no, no, you know, this is, I'm not, I'm not making BS here at all. Finest known by far. So, um, if you, Mike, if you hit the video button, the photo doesn't do it justice. You can really see on the video, see that little kind yep, of like play it. button there. So um, you can really see it has luster, wow. has yeah, full really luster. Does. And so a lot of these, one of the reasons why uh, we at Harlan Burke and a lot of now companies are doing what we started it to do is doing videos of every single coin. Because when you take a photograph, it you get this grayness to it. And so you don't pick up any of that luster. Well, it's so, way harder to 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 um to pick up things in a photograph, and it's way harder to lie in right. a video. Right, and most of the eyed Mars that come up have really crappy surfaces, and part of that is, um, and you know the the thought is, and I, you know I don't know for for a fact, but uh, supposedly there was a hoard found of eyed Mars in the '90s, like early '90s, that were found in Greece. Um, and that they were all cleaned improperly with acid and destroyed the surfaces. And so a lot of the eyed bars that came out over the last 30 years. Oh, so um, they're toasted. They're just absolutely burnt. The luster's gone off of them and there's yep. nothing left. Yep. 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 So, and I don't know it for a fact, this is all hearsay. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't at a farm. I didn't know anybody. So this is just the rumors yeah, it certainly was that not were the out case there. with this coin. Well, no, this has a pedigree back to the twenties. Yeah. No, so I just not only the burnt part. And there's a good chance that a museum might try to buy this. So uh some are saying this could be the first million dollar uh silver eyed bar. So we did have the gold eyed bar with the hole that brought two point five, and we have the tainted one that brought four point two. But uh but there has never been a silver one that has ever broken the million dollar mark. Uh I think an estimate of half a million is uh is wholesale and so i think that it easily could go for a million to to 1.5 or even two so it's hard to say a lot of people who have the means have this coin already in their collection so it's just a matter of really who's competing so um but it's Still really beautiful. a fantastic coin yeah. really is so and something to uh you know, and this coin, if you look, it's been off the market since 1977. That's the last time it sold. Wow. 
So, you know, who knows when this coin will come back on the market again. If it's bought by a museum, it'll never be on the market again. That's it. Because museums typically these days, they don't deaccession. Everything's subject to change. Everything is, I suppose. But that's typically not their way. Right. So, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, 2284. Yes, this is... This is not a special coin. Um, I was trying to find what I thought was a good deal in the sale. Um, and so they have this estimated a thousand Swiss francs with an eight hundred hour minimum. Uh, it's you know, this is Ptolemy the first. Um, so this is after Ptolemy took over Egypt and started minting coins, and this is just after Ptolemy died. So this was this you know was struck right after he had passed somewhere around that range, and so, <clears throat> but what's cool about it? It's not the best one, but it's decent metal, um, but it has a 1921 pedigree, which is kind of cool. So you know if somebody picked that up for two thousand dollars, that would be a bargain, and you'd have a 1920s pedigree to boot. So um, you know when I'm looking for deals, uh, sometimes coins that maybe not are the highest quality that a lot of the ultra wealthy are going to be competing for. This is the perfect coin for people don't have th those kinds of means to get a really cool coin with a decent pedigree. Yeah, so, In my mind, this would be like the perfect coin for me. Yeah. It's the perfect coin for a lot of people. Yeah. And so, um, and there's a lot of coins out there guys that are like this. And so even in these really high end uh, auctions, you can find diamonds in the rough. Well, the photos, you're right, don't do it any justice. I showed the video, and yeah, it just yeah. does so much nicer. No, and that's, I mean, honestly, when I started doing, and you know, now I can say it, but you know, I kept it a secret for a while, but I would say our sales went up by about 30% when I started doing videos on every coin. And, um, you know, and, and that's not even an exaggeration. So, and I was and i wasn't trying necessarily i was doing it for sales but i was also doing it because i got so tired of the photography not picking up luster and and not showing look you know sometimes we miss hairline scratches and things like that in the comments and so this picks up everything sure so you're gonna see if it has a scratch you're gonna see because the way it's hitting the light and all of those things you're gonna notice those things a lot of times the photography doesn't always um it doesn't really show everything that you want to see. And sometimes you do that, you know, depending on how the light's hitting it when you're photographing it. And, and that so, goes both ways, though. I mean, there are times it when, does. The, you know, the luster or the toning just doesn't, you know, the photos would just don't get it and they don't do it justice. <laughs> and then there are times when, you know, a decent photograph really kind of makes a coin look way better than it is. So, yep. you know, the yep. videos are hard to, they're hard to fake. And uh, I think they're more determinative. Mm -hmm. yep. How's that for a big word? So anyway, guys, go through this. You know, I, there's three catalogs for this. Uh, I believe the first two catalogs actually in conjunction with CNG and with um, NGSA. My guess is, and I don't know this for a fact, but the collector obviously was good friends with all three companies and didn't want to piss anybody off. So, which was, you know, which is it's cool. Okay. You can be so, friends with everybody. You can, you can. And so um, the first catalog, uh, it's called, it's titled the Dioscuri, I believe, and it's all Republican and the Republican is amazing. So if you're into Republican coinage, I didn't really profile any here, but check it out. It had that catalog, ha those catalogs have something for everybody. You can find it on Numus bid where we're at. You can find them on bitter. Uh, I'm sure it's on six bit as well. Um, I think you can even go to the NAC site and see it as well. Lots of places to view these catalogs without getting the catalog. So in any case. And then you don't um, have a catalog to have to throw. Away. <clears throat> so uh, thank you all for coming to my museum uh, tour. I appreciate you all coming. Um, and uh, and sure to uh, tip the staff. Yeah, exactly. On your way leave, out. You, leave your tip. Uh, you know, the gift the shop next... is on the left. Exactly. Exactly. So th thank you for all of that. Um, and uh, let's continue on. Let's uh, get into our educational section, Mike. Educational segment. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you've been boom. working on this all night. Uh, let's do this. And let's do this. 
And then let's go full screen. You can do your your slide show. Oh. There you go, buddy. I don't see you on here. I'm on here. Trust me. Okay, that's weird. Usually it shows me that you're here, but I don't see you on here. So, um. So anyway, uh, that music. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know if that's yeah, yeah. erotic music or not, but no, it's, uh, it's Rufus. Anyway, um, Spintrias or Spintria, the plural. Um, so these are erotic tokens. Uh, these were issued in the first century AD around the time of Tiberius. There are some that are can come later, but it, typically they're all from this one time period. Um, and so you'll have an erotic scene on one side, and on the other side, you'll have a numeric number. And the numeric numbers can be typically, I believe, between 1 and 26 is the ones that have been recorded. Um, and what significance I, do those numbers have? So nobody really knows what these were used for. That's the whole thing. So um, so Buttry, he, he did the work on these. It's called the Spintria as a Historical Source. Um, I believe he put it out in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and so, and you can find some of his writing online about that as well. And so um, a lot of people believe these are brothel tokens. And um, especially during the time of, of Tiberius, it was not allowed. It was punishable, I believe, by death to bring any of uh, any coinage with the emperor's image on it into a brothel. And if you got caught, you were in deep doo doo. And so the idea is, is that you bought these tokens, could possibly then go into the brothel and spend it on the person with that, um, you know. Uh, oh, and on the right there, uh, there that's a actual fresco, a wall fresco from Pompeii. So there was actually a brothel, and I've actually been there. And the brothel actually, a lot of the brothels, uh, they were slaves. So they were, they had prison doors, you know, they had bars on the windows. And um, they'd have the sexual position above the bed that they were, they specialized in. And so, um, and you could actually go. Ponies? They, well, I think specialized. I'm sure they did other oh, okay. things, but okay. that was their specialty. Gotcha. So, um it's been argued that the new uh, the numeric number could have indicated the value uh, in asses, and not the sexual no, asses, not those but, kind of asses, but the denomination the asses. Um, there was I did read have read elsewhere where they have said that the tokens then would be turned into the Roman Roman moneyers, and that they would tax it because it was a token, and they would take their cut of of you know the sex trade essentially yeah so uh i don't know if that's true or not um but uh supposedly there's 15 various sexual scenes and you will not just only find um you, all the different positions but you'll also find a lot of uh male on male there was a lot of homosexual ones because homosexual homosexuality was um was acceptable in both greek and roman civilization and so, uh, so it wasn't uncommon to see uh, two men on some of these tokens, which we will see. So if you go to the first slide after the, there we go. Uh, uh, one up. See, now you popped up on me. That was weird. Um, God. So here we have kind of two very similar, both have the numer numeric five on them, but a little bit different de design, but you still have like the cloth kind of coming down and, uh, they're very, they're very beautiful things. These, these typically aren't cheap um, because they're they are relatively rare, and so. Uh, but it, uh, you know, like anything, it comes down to quality. So um, I've seen these things sell for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and I've seen these things sell for eight hundred to a thousand bucks. It just depends on how nice it is, like anything else in this world. So now, are you sure that the V is actually a five and not? Uh... Yeah, it's a five. <laughs> Just saying. Um, if we go to the next slide, so here uh, we have, uh, you know, oh, somebody yeah. uh, having oh, a little yeah. fun there. 
Uh, I love how he has his arm up and uh, he's all excited there. And uh, well, it looks like had, to, he wants to let you know that he's not doing anything down there. Right. And it looks like he's got a, um, uh, it looks like it's got a counter mark there as well of an eagle. Um, I don't know if that's ancient or not. That's the thing is I was trying to read up on I mean, it. I didn't say anything about it. The counter mark almost looks like mod, like more like Russian or, you know, something more modern. It probably is ancient, but it just looks like, I don't know why this would be countermarked. To me, this is like marked in like the 17th or 18th century to somebody's collection, you know, like to say, right. this is part of my collection. That's what it looks like to me. So, because, you know, guys, coins, like if you go back to like old museum, I've seen old museum coins, they actually wrote in red pen and black pen on the coins themselves. Coins, you know, they were not that it, they're, they were common. And so they weren't treated with respect, even in museums. In fact, if any of you guys go to the Boston Museum of Art or some other museums, amazing coin collections, some of those places, all the coins are polished. They ruined all of them because it was a practice of polishing them. So, so is it your thought that, that it, I guess my question is, is, is this countermark common on this coin? No, I've okay. never seen a countermark. So this, it is just this particular example <laughs> that is likely countermark. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, go to the next slide. You can just, it's just fun seeing all the different positions, all these oh, little sure. creative sure. positions that they're getting into. So there, what's interesting too, is there's also another series of tokens of Tiberius and his family. And so that have the same kind of numeric numbers on it. So some have also argued these could be gaming pieces, but there's a, there's no evidence for any of this stuff. Whether I don't it's see any way that this would be a gaming piece. I mean, well, I just yeah, the other one was is that it could have been used for lockers in the brothels, like to go in and that's your number. You go and put your clothes in that locker and you pay your token. So for that locker, to what put your I'm more away. surprised of is that I don't see things like lion's heads on, you know, the guy on top and stuff like that. So you're getting into Picasso. That's a very Picasso thing. So, so I just saw, I just went to the art Institute and saw Picasso's drawings and all of his, he was very sexual and all of his, um, his photos of, of men, which represents him is he's, it's a beast head. No, so I was actually referring kind of to like, uh, to like Alexander and the, oh. the lion's head and yeah, well, Hercules I, and all that. I stuff. suppose if they were trying to get into Hercules, uh, well, that's the sex. thing that I was saying is I could see that in the brothel token, you know, get the guy on Possibly. top and get him Hercules. Possibly. So if you go to the next one, uh, you know, looks like she's got some booty going there. She got, so, uh, she got a lot going on there. She does. She does. There's no doubt. No doubt. And because these are made out of bronze, you can get different patinas. So this has a really nice, beautiful green patination, um, which is very, very nice. So Kind of reminds and, me of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Go to the next slide. And here is male on male. So these are two men. Uh, hey. probably a, an older man with a younger man, which was very common. Um, it was very common for old men to take young boys. Um, and they really and so, do seem to have an obsession with guys in their junk. <laughs> I suppose so. I, no, suppose I, so. I mean, I'm being serious. It's like, I have seen more ancient coins with guys with a, with, you know, a third leg hanging down there. And, you know, it's like, I just don't. In, you know the, the brothel the, token i understand it better but in just your yeah. average coin that you've been showing me over the past couple of weeks it's like there's been a lot of dirt look if you're a god you better have the package to back <laughs> yeah, it up yeah, i'm a god all right i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying i understand so and also like phallic symbols were also good luck there was a lot of like there's tons of well, they were good for fertility gee i wonder why but there's a, like there's a lot of Roman bronze uh, phallic amulets. I sell them all. In fact, I've got one going in the next in not this next catalog, the catalog after. Was that the I've one sold... that Mandy had on his desk? Yeah. Well, okay. no, he bought another one. But oh, okay. uh, 
but yeah, they were actually worn um, as good luck symbols, uh, fertility, um, strength. You know, there was a lot that went into the into the junk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> beyond just that it was junk. So wow. um, I think it just had to do with masculinity, the male itself and the strength and, you know, all of that fun stuff. So um, go to the next slide, Mike. And, you know. Oh, one up. There you go. Getting a little crazier now. We're up on a high rise table there. Bam, 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 bam. You know, popping that thing out. So, um, and then the next slide, a little bit simpler, not such a good quality. This one probably, you know, Jeez. probably a five hundred to eight hundred dollar token. Yeah, this not, one really looks like it's seen a rough life. Yeah, I mean this this looks like, um, you know. I, I personally, if I had to give that token to uh, it, lead that into the brothel, I, I I wouldn't expect anything very good from that uh, expenditure. You get a disease. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. And if we go to the last one, I'm thinking um, knob job, but I'm not sure. But that's kind of what it's looking like to me. Um, Yeah, you could have uh, a little handy going on there. It's yeah, because like, she seems to be far down nice the rags. Rack. Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. He's he's so, ripped. You see him, he's cut. Yeah, you know, he's he just took off his his uh his lion skin and uh he's got it like hanging behind the bed, you know. Yeah. So um anyway, uh brothel tokens, uh spintria, very cool, nice area, not easy to collect, but very fun to enjoy and look at. Yes, yes, that was fun. And, and, I, and nobody enjoyed, really knows. Nobody really knows what they were used for. So, but we can pretty much guess. I I think they're giving you a hint. Yeah, yeah. And that exactly. was that was a chance for me to kind of let loose a little bit because uh, exactly. I don't really exactly. I don't really make a lot of comments like that. But uh, I went out and have some fun. <laughs> so tonight, so, there we go. Go ahead. No, I was going to lead you in. Oh, okay, so, you so go for it tonight. Uh, instead of a pearl of wisdom, we have decided that we are going to offer a contest. So, we have this question for you. Now, it's it's real simple. Following instructions is always going to be important in entering these contests. So, it's half the battle. Yeah, here is the question. On tonight's show, we talked about the Eidmar denarius. On the Eidmar, who do the daggers belong to? So, we'll give away 3 copies of the of a book, which is the Guide to Biblical Coins by David Hendon. Okay, if you look at this book on Amazon, hardcover is $98 currently. We will give away three copies to people, you know, from a random drawing of people that send me the correct answer to Mike N at HJBLTD. Dot com. Use the keyword contest in your subject line. So send it to me, Mike N at HJBLTD.com. I, it's pretty typically, I think, in our under screen. So, um, and that was, it was volume five, wasn't it? It is, is volume it? five, which is, volume five. uh, yeah. So, and, and they're, they're brand new. They're absolutely new in wrapping. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is, Email address that you see right here under my name. That's where you send the answer to. And uh, you definitely could win a copy of David Hendon's book. And I think we're going to keep doing this for a little while because we kind of realized that like 44 episodes, 44 uh, Pearl of Wisdoms. I need a, I need a break. So we're going to do some. We want to so, do some. So he's going to give you a break by giving stuff away. I think this is yeah. going to be okay. You know, you got to give to get. That's the way I look at things in life. Okay. So. Okay. So we're going to give for a while. Okay. Well, we kind of give with the show anyway, the but we're going to give on, on top. giving. We're going to give on top of yes, what we're giving. Yes, this is a gift that you. keeps on giving, gives more That's right. and more. That's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, I want to take a moment again to thank everybody for all of your support. And um, every time you guys come to the shows and you let us know how much you like the show, yes. um, emails that I've gotten, people I've talked to on the phone, uh, some people um, have sent us 
books to read, which is yes. really cool. Fantastic. And then there's and so and on top of it, then you have the you know, like the great people at Bellinger, you know, who supply us with uh wine, why they still do it, I have no idea, but you know, it's like they're awesome and we love them. And uh, yep. they are the official wine of the Ancient Coin podcast. Go buy Bellinger. It's a uh it's a an Oregon wine. I think they're I think they're I think they're the the uh the wine of choice for all ancient coin podcasts. That's that is correct. It is it is the <laughs> official wine of the ancient coin podcast. That's true. That's true. So anyway, thanks guys. Yeah, Appreciate no. It. So thank you, thank you to everybody who listens. Thank you to everybody that inspires us or helps in some way with the show. Uh, we really, really do appreciate the feedback. And thanks, been... and thanks for the comments when I mess up and you guys correct me or add new history. I'll go for or, it. Or you know, correct my mistakes, which I am happy to say I'll take full ownership of. I do the best I can, but we all you know, learn every perfect. day. Isn't that what you said? Well, we all learn every day and we are all a community that are yes. here to help each other spread right. the word of collecting ancient coins and to make it fun. Right. And nobody's better than anybody else. So yep. it's like, you know, Hey, we, we all make mistakes and we want you to call us out on it because yep. it's important that people get the right information. And that's the that's what the community is all about. Yeah. As long as you do it in a nice, respectful yeah. manner. That's all love. we ever you ask. Call so. somebody out with love and and that's all good. <laughs> so right. Um, exactly. Yeah. So enter our contests and uh we'll have something else for you in a couple of weeks. Uh in the meantime, Central States is coming up next week. And you're going to be at Central States. I'm going to I be am. at Central States. We're going to have, what, two tables? We're going to have an ancient table and a U.S. coins ancient, table? Ancient world table and then a U.S. table. Okay. So they're, it's like Aaron and I are actually going to be in different places. So come and say hi to both of us. We will. Yeah. We will. And then we'll all be at the A&A as well, yes. which is in Chicago. Yep. So um, the Central States is in Schaumburg. Correct. So if anybody's in the Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana maybe Iowa and want to come to central States. It's a great show. There's thousands of dealers there. And uh, the central States um, show is one of the better shows of the year. It truly is. It's, it used to be this really kind of intimate show and it's, it's outgrown that now it's, it's big. It's, it's gotten to be like, it's not a and a yet, but it's getting pretty, pretty. Yeah. And the, uh, the Midwest shows have done pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think some Ilda of the shows show have, does well. And, you know, I yeah. mean, it's just a bunch of them. Tinley Park does really well. Does. Yeah. Does. So, um, again, guys in the area, come say hello. I'll try to have some swag there to yeah. give away. And so uh, if you want to come up and ask for, don't be shy, come up, ask for a shirt. Yeah. Um, we'll have I might even have a hat. I might even have a hat. Medium, I don't have many. I don't medium, have large, many large, extra large are the only sizes we've got left. So there might be a medium in there. No, no, they I all said gone? medium, large, extra large. That's uh, what okay, we got. got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've had some people like I've had like in Baltimore, I had them, and then they like walk up and they talk to them for a while, and then I find out they watch it, listen to the show, and then then they're like, uh, "Do you have any shirts?" You know, or I'll say, or I'll say, do you want a shirt? And they're like, oh yeah, you did say that. And they're like, well, you could have just asked me. You yeah, know, don't don't be shy. Look, they so. they don't want to impose, and they certainly don't want to be told no. That's I think what it really more comes to is yeah, hey, man, you gotta, no, I don't have any blood. You know, it's like you big time, but we don't do that <laughs> stuff. So it's like no, exactly. come up, say hi, and it's like we're always happy to take a minute and say hi and talk to you for a couple. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, guys. Thanks. All right. So, um, quick, short, sweet, to the point, but I think you got a lot of value for the buck tonight. So, uh, we'll talk to you on episode 45 of the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. Thanks for listening to the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. We'll return with another episode soon. Meantime, you can join our private group on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com and search the Groups tab for Ancient Coin Podcast Discussion Group and ask to join. There you can become part of our community, where we share and discuss ancient coins as well as the show, the ancient coin market, auctions, or just to give our own opinions on things in order to learn together. Join Aaron and Mike again soon for the next episode of the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke.